Starbucks, this is Jordan. How can I help you? Hi, this is Thomas from the corporate office with Starbucks. Okay. And um, I just How needed, can I help you, Thomas? Hi, I just needed to find out, do you have the red cups there? Have you started with the red cups? Uh, yeah, I believe that we're just finishing out our white ones, um, but we've started putting out the holiday cups. Okay, well, um, there's been a problem with those. I don't know if you've heard about the controversy with the red cups. Oh, yes, there has. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I did hear about that. Yeah, we're going to have to have you turn all of the red cups inside out. I mean, they're white on the inside, right? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, if you could just turn them in... <clears throat> I'm sorry, if you could just turn them inside out. Uh, like every... How, how do I do that? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's because of the controversy, and people are freaking out. They're saying they're Nazi cups. Oh, geez. And, and all this <laughs> crazy Nazi stuff, people. and, and they're, the, I don't know, some weird thing about Christians. I just don't get it. But, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> like, could you take one of the cups right now and, and just turn it inside out? You can see how to do it. It's pretty easy. Turn inside out. Maybe, if you do it one, near the phone so I can hear it, I can tell if you're doing it right. One sec. Is it working? Um, I don't... Hang on. <laughs> I might be able to get it. Just give me one sec. All right. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. What can we get for you? Corporate And that's who's on the phone right now, and they want us to turn all of our red cups inside out to white. I've never done that before. And I don't know how. I'm so sorry. Hold on just a sec. What? <laughs> That's not a thing. You can't turn cups inside out. I don't know. I don't know. We still want... have some white cups, though. Okay. Do you want me to we don't have any that? venti white cups. We're going to have to yeah, use red Because cups. of all of the controversy with the red cups. That's so ridiculous. So I'm going to... Okay. Hold on. So I don't physically know how to turn the cup inside out, oh. so we do still have the white cups, so we can use those for the time being until I can talk to my manager, but just I just talked to her right now, and she doesn't know how to do that either. Oh, well, no, it's okay. I can walk you through it if you just uh, get, a, get a red cup out real quick. Okay, I have one. All right, now just tr kind of peel it the opposite way. <laughs> the opposite way, you know, just kind of shift it. The opposite way. All right. Like push the bottom. Are you so you push the bottom like in? Yeah, and then yeah. it just pops out. Yeah, push the bottom in and it should just turn right around. Okay, I think I may have got it. Just one sec. He said you just press the button. He said what? He says that you just push the bottom in and it turns around. Are you sorry, but then I'm going to be touching people's cups. Yeah. I'm gonna Wash your hands. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to score. I'll take a look. Hi. Um, I'm so sorry. So turning the cups inside out, that's going to make it so that we're touching inside each of and every cup. Well, wash your damn hands then. I can wash my hands, but I don't understand why I can't just use my white cups. Well, no, we, because we have all these red cups. We can't let them go to waste. We need you to turn the cups inside out. I think that this is... Um, can I call back? Yeah, if you want to. It's, yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. But, I mean, if you can't turn them inside out, she could just use scissors and tape, maybe? I think that you're messing with us. No, I'm not messing with you. I'm from the corporate office. I don't think so, but thank you so much. Can, I'm going to call back. I can give you my partner number if you don't believe me. Um, can I just call corporate back in a little bit? If you want to, sure, but they're going to tell you the same perfect. thing. God damn it, motherfucker. Okay, perfect. Shit. Thanks. You're welcome. Normal people use telephones to call people. They don't have sex over them. Get a life, phone, loser. You've been trying to call you, and your name is Lloyd. What is your last name? It's a Jerba.
I just got a call from a Roy. The number shows up and it's spoof. Says he's at my house replacing my roof. Man, this guy's a jerk for this. I just rushed home, left work for this. No one's at my house on my roof. This Roy guy, what a goof. We just made a non sweet pool, and the landlord says, not cool. Not on the lease, my name's Roy Chevelle, unit 203. I'm a tenant from hell. There's a tunnel system attached. We found a secret hatch. Don't get smart with me, and I'm tight. This is now an archaeological dig site. Everybody, you are listening to the Snowplow Show for June eleventh, two thousand eighteen. Thank you, Brandon, for that intro song. That's a song that he sent back in October of last year. Love that one. This is episode four hundred and seventy-three. I didn't call to get the sponsors yet. Let me make a call real quick. I've been handing off the sponsor duties, offloading that onto uh, various corporations and stuff. They're keeping track of all this stuff for me. It's too much for me to keep up with. Starbucks City Place. How can I help you? Hi there. This is Brad from the Snowplow Show. Could you tell me who the sponsors are today, please? I'll get that. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Go ahead. The sponsors of today's Snowplow Show are Dustin W., The Real Crazy Kraz, St. Pepe, JT, and Simspeak. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. No problem. Uh, You have a nice day. You too. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Bye. All right. There we go. Dustin W., The Real Crazy Kraz, St. Pepe, JT, and Sim Speak. Those are the sponsors of this episode. Yeah, I've just been like offloading the record keeping to random employees around the country. It makes things easier on me. Gives me less to do, less to worry about. Hopefully they don't screw things up. But anyway, yeah, the sponsors make everything possible here. They keep the shows happening. All the supporters do over at patreon.com slash phone losers. If you sign up there for just five bucks a month, you get a bunch of extra shows. You get an extra show every week. Secret shows that only the supporters get to hear. If I weren't the host of this show, I would totally do that just for the extra shows. And speaking of extra shows and extra pranks and stuff, there's a brand new one over at youtube.com slash comc pranks. It's a call that me and Carlito did together where we talked to this guy about being a safety driver in a self-driving car. And it's a long one. It's like 22 minutes long, but I kind of enjoyed this one. We try to convince this guy to be one of the safety drivers and he's worried about his safety for some reason. Child, it's I don't know why. I have to ask you, do you think I'm at risk here? Well, that's why I was asking if how, <coughs> excuse me, how durable your body is and everything. Well, you know, I don't know how durable my body is. What are we talking about? Well, you know, I- safety equipment in there, and and it's we've got the the you know the foam like from Demolition Man and the airbags and um, yeah yeah we're we're doing our best to keep you safe, but you will be involved in car crashes and possibly explosions. Just so you know, so far nobody's died. Uh, you know the, yeah, the thing. So after- how, how many people have been injured, and what injuries have they gotten? Oh, are we allowed to say that, Carly? Um, I mean, they've survived. We have had no zero loss of life. I don't understand why he's so concerned. It's the weirdest thing. 
just trying to give this guy a job and he's given us the third degree, much like those third degree burns that the last driver suffered. So if you want to hear that entire call and see the guy on video react to it, I will have a link to that in the show notes or you can just go over to youtube.com slash comc pranks. There's this part near the end where Carlito actually gets him to stand up and bend over so his ass is facing the camera and say something dirty. It's pretty bizarre stuff. And there are two new Calls of Mass Confusion videos every week. I've got a quick update before we get started with today's show about the T&I machine, you know, the answering machine hacking thing that I've set up in my kitchen. I posted a picture of it on Twitter of the setup and everything, and it's getting a lot of attention on Twitter for some reason. There's been 503 retweets of it, and the phones have been ringing nonstop here. People keep calling in and trying to hack answering machines over and over, day and night. It was never this busy before, so I'm going to add a few phone lines on there. But it motivated me to set up the rest of the machines. So I have all eight machines working on there now. There are eight answering machines that you can call into and try to hack into them. And you can listen to the messages on them. You can hear the outgoing messages that other people have left on the machines. So if that's your kind of thing, the phone number to call is 505 796 5789. I'm hoping to put some other fun stuff on that line too, now that I've got all the answering machines set up on it. Hello, phone company. I'm thinking of changing my phone style. Should I get push buttons instead of a dial? Come see for yourself. At the GTE Phone Mart. Now your phone company has so many styles and colors to choose from, we've opened up phone stores for you to come see for yourself. We call them GTE Phone Marts. So if you're toying with the idea of push buttons, come see for yourself at the GTE Phone Mart. It's a whole new way to see your phone company. I've still got a bunch of numbers left here on my prank line, on the Google Voice prank line number, because somebody set up a Craigslist for an apartment that I have for rent all the way in New Bedford. And I called a ton of them on the last show, but there's still a bunch left. I haven't gotten any calls since Friday, though. Or no, there's one call here on Saturday, but the ad got pulled down in the middle of the live show I was doing on Friday which is probably a good thing, because I was getting a ton, Hi, boy, ton of calls. Marie. I'm calling about the three-bedroom rental that you have available. I'm very interested. If you could give me a call back at your soonest convenience, my number is five zero. Okay, so I'm going to call Marie and see if she's still interested in the apartment. This is Marie. Hey, Marie, it's Roy. Uh, you called about my apartment, the one for nine fifty. You're hilarious. What's hilarious? If you call the phone number again, I'm going to report. I already actually reported the uh, the ads that you have. What, what did and I do wrong? The way you're calling people back. Yeah. It's funny that it's a prank, but if you call the same person back, you're you're gonna seriously have some issues. Oh, I don't remember talking to you. What did I tell you? Oh, okay. What, what was it? What, was it funny? Just remember that. Don't call this number again, and you have been reported about what you've done. Okay. So. Well, you probably left multiple messages, which is the only reason. Okay, she hung up. It's her own fault. I deleted the message on every person I called, so she must have left multiple messages. It's her own fault. Hi, Roy. This is Patty. I am calling in regards to your um, ad on Craigslist. Um, If you could call me back, I'd like to know the location and if it's still available. All right. Let's call her. (laughs) Hello? Returning your call. Called about the apartment. Oh, okay. I didn't make it. <laughs> oh, no. Too late. Too late. You, you lost your window. I'm hanging up. I'm blocking you forever. That's what she gets. I called her three times, and she kept just picking up and sitting there and listening to me, not saying anything, until I finally told her I was calling from the apartment. Whatever, Patty. I don't need you as a tenant. Hi, yes. My name is Michelle. I'm calling about the three-bedroom apartment. Just wanted to know if it was still available when you'll be showing it. Oh, it's still available. My telephone number. She'll see. Hello? Hi, Michelle. Who's calling? It's Roy. You called about the apartment. I'm returning your call. Oh, hi. Hi. Yes. Where is this apartment? I've called so many. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's all the way in New Bedford. It's the three-bedroom for $9.50. I don't remember. First floor? It's what? Was it a first floor? First, uh, no, actually, um, uh, the first floor is taken. You'd be on sub-level 7. 
Oh, no, that's way too much. Okay. What, All right. Thank you. What do you mean way too much? Seven is too far up. Oh, no, it's down. It's a subterranean level seven. Uh, we've been digging underneath the house, making more levels of the house. Uh-huh. So it, it goes down 10 levels now. We have six families living on different levels now, and you'd be on the seventh level. Like way away at the bottom? Well, no, the bottom's the tenth. We, we're we're going we're gonna to stop at 10. The, the levels, they're all as big as the house. You know, they're all uh -huh. the same size as the house, and it looks exactly the same inside. But, mm -hmm. but they go underneath the ground. So you're seven stories. So my apartment would be underneath the ground is what you're telling me? Yeah, seven stories below the earth. Oh, my God. That's kind of big. <laughs> oh, It'd be pretty cool, okay. wouldn't it? Like it'd be a, an interesting living situation. Yeah. And there's lots um, of other families and stuff. We're working on an elevator. For now, you'd have to take the stairs. Okay. Roy Street is the street? Uh, what is the street? Uh, no, my name's Roy. It's on, it's on Baxter Street, 225 Baxter Street. Baxter. Where's that near? Uh, uh, Bates. Do you know Bates Street? No. Oh, What's yeah. around there? I don't know. Don't you have GPS? No, what what would be around that street? Uh, there's a like, Chevron. Is there any like stores or anything around there? There's a Chevron gas station. North end or well, south end? You said you wouldn't even like having uh, living seven levels underneath the ground. Is it north end or south end? Oh, it's the north end. North end. Kind of up there by the water, oh. just a few blocks from the water. Okay. Uh, um, when guys, can that be seen? Oh, uh, anytime. Yeah, my, my wife and I, we live on sub-level three mm -hmm. underneath the ground. And um, do you guys own a bird already? Yeah. Okay, uh, that's good because, you know, if the, if the bird dies, then you know that the, the air is too thin or there's been a methane gas leak or whatever. It's kind of unpredictable here underground. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to have a bird. A couple birds, really, it would be a good idea. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So when are you coming over? When are you coming over, Michelle? Hello? Wow. That was rude. Hi, Roy. My name is Alexis. I saw the ad that you posted on Craigslist, and I was hoping that you had a few minutes to talk about Alexis. the place that you were trying to rent out. Give me a call back at someone. Thank you. This reminds me of an idea that Gonzo had. He said, hey, Brad, can you call people named Alexa while you have an Amazon Echo next to you so it keeps interrupting the conversation? What a great idea. Hey, Alexis. <laughs> there we go. I've connected it to the soundboard. Hopefully she picks up, and I'm going to say her name a lot and then get really pissed off. Hello? Hey, Alexis. How are you? To be Good. honest, Success? it's been kind of a rough day. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Just kidding. I'm great. Sorry, my, my Alexa keeps going off. This is Roy. You called about my apartment. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you for getting back to me, but I, um, I found somewhere else. Uh, it's okay. Thanks anyway, Alexis. I hope you have a nice day. Hmm. I'm not sure. Thank you. Uh huh. Oh, God damn it. Shit. Everything okay? Uh, yeah, it's just my, my Alexa keeps going off. It's really I irritating when I, when I, whenever I say your name. You must get this all the time. Um, this is actually your first. Oh, okay. Well, well, have a great day. All right, bye. 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 Well, that wasn't as hilarious as I was hoping, but I tried. I tried looking up, like, Gonzo made that suggestion somewhere, I think on the Patreon or in a YouTube video or something. I thought it was the best idea ever, so I searched white pages for tons of people named Alexa. Hi, Alexa. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Thanks for asking. Sure, no problem. You know how much I love small talking. But yeah, I called like every one that I could find in the white pages, and I either wasn't getting answers or they weren't responding that well to the whole thing. And really, it's hard to use somebody's name in every single sentence to set off my Alexa. Shut the fuck up, Alexa. But maybe I should retry it with the name Alexis. Because that seems to set it off every time, but then it just doesn't respond to the weird things that I say. So, probably a terrible idea. I don't know. Hi, my name is Jenny. I'm calling about the house for rent on Craigslist. 
You could call me back at 774 Hello? Hi, Jenny. Yes? It, it's Roy. Uh, you called about my apartment on Friday, the, the house in, all the way in New Bedford. Hi. Hi. Were you, were you still looking for a place? Um, which, which, yeah, which one is this one? Uh, Sorry, I called a couple, so. Uh, oh, it's okay. It's in New Bedford. Um, it's on uh, Bates. 225 Bates. Bates? Yeah. Bates? Yeah, Bates. Okay. And, and it's a house or an apartment? Uh, well, it's a house that's been converted. Um, like there's okay. different levels on the house for people to live on. Okay. And the one that's available right now is uh, sub-level 7. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, well, we've been, we've been digging underneath the house. So we, yep. we, we're, we basically we're digging holes that are just as big as the house and, you know, making entire houses underneath. So right now we have nine, wow. nine levels of houses and there's a bunch of families that live underground underneath the house. And um, the one that's available right now is sub-level seven. It's a subterranean level. So you'd be seven. Underground? St- yeah, seven stories under, under the earth. Oh, God, that's scary. Oh, no, no, it's <laughs> There's fine. no windows? Uh, well, we have fake windows. You know, they're, they're, they look like windows, and there's, like, fluorescent lighting behind them. So, it, it, you know, it, the, the light shines in, and there's curtains and stuff. Oh, God, that's weird. But then when you open up the <laughs> curtains, it's just a brick wall. Oh, God, that's scary. Oh, no. I don't think I could live like that. No, it's not <laughs> scary. There's other families with kids down there and everything, and... Right now, you have to go downstairs, but um, we're, we're installing an elevator, a homemade elevator. Oh, my goodness. Like Is that nothing du- above Earth? <laughs> uh, no, no. There, there's two units above Earth, the first floor and the second floor, but they're uh, taken. Uh, my wife and I live in one of them. Oh. So we're, we're just... Uh, we're, yeah, no, I'm not going to go underground. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's, really, it's very quaint down there, really, and, and there's a lot of people down there. It's very quiet. Because uh, it's it's well insulated because there's two feet of earth in between each apartment. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's yep. so weird. Oh no, it's it's uh, you know it's it's you know we don't tell we haven't we we haven't told the government that we've done this, so it's kind of oh, like a, a hush hush thing. Like you you don't want to be advertising that you live seven levels under the earth. Yeah, no, I don't think I would want to live seven miles under the earth. I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah, apparently you have to have permits (laughs) to dig like this. It's really weird. Yeah. But, I mean, it's our own property. We should be able to dig under our own property. Oh, she's gone. All right, I think I need to give that idea a rest. I've done that way too many times now. Hi, Roy. My name's Carrie. I was calling regarding the available rental property that you have. If you could, please give me a call back at 7... Hello. Hi, Carrie. It's Roy. I'm returning your call. You called about the uh, house in New Bedford. Oh, I did. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. How you doing? I'm good, okay. thank you. Okay. So I have a question. Okay. Um, you said it accepted pets, correct? Oh, yeah, we take pets. Okay, because I have a lab and a chihuahua. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, you understand it's a themed rental, right? It's a what? A themed rental. It's just... Uh, what do you- it's it's a thing all the these millennials like. It's a uh, the entire house is basically a, a ball pit. It's basically a ball pit, you said. Yeah, you know, like um, when you're a kid, you go in those ball pits, like in McDonald's or wherever. Right. It's just filled with those little balls that are like three or four inches around. Right. Uh, every room is waist high in those types of balls. Oh, no, I had no idea. Yeah, so you, you, you might have an issue with the dogs being able to navigate through there because they have to learn how to walk through and kind of tunnel through all the balls. Yeah, I'm not interested then. Why not? Don't you like fun? Well, of course I like fun, but I mean, like, I don't want to walk through a bunch of balls every day. Yeah, but it's a theme. It's fun. It's, it's like, a, you know, it's, it's the new thing that people are doing these days. I don't see why you have to be like that about it. I'm not. I'm just telling you I'm not interested. I mean, that's great. That's just not my thing. Well, you don't know if it's your thing. Have you ever lived in a house with a ball pit in every room? No, I've owned a house, but I wouldn't want a ball pit in every room of mine. How do you know you wouldn't want it if you haven't tried it before? 
Are we really going to have this conversation? Well, I'm just saying you're being kind of uppity about it. and you, you I'm not being it. kind of uppity about it. I'm just explaining I'm not interested in the property if every room is a ball pit. Why would I want to own? Why would I want to rent a piece of property that there's a ball pit for me to try to? After I'm working 15 hours a day and come home to try to walk through balls. Yeah, you you come home and no, you don't walk through balls. You like dive in. You have fun. Okay, well I don't want to like, dive in. It's relaxing. Either. It's like I think this is really ridiculous, and it sounds like a scam to me. Maybe, maybe I think that your lifestyle is ridiculous. That you don't live in a ball pit. You fucking weirdo. You know, like, why don't you just be like everyone else and, and just live in a normal house? Oh, okay. There, there she goes. She does not want to live in a ball pit. I wanted her to ask questions like, you know, how do you get your furniture in? And how do you open the door without all the balls falling out? But nope, she just wanted to complain about my lifestyle. Yeah, hey, Roy, my name is David. Um, uh, the telephone number will come up is New Mexico. However, I, I actually live in Cape Cod now. Uh, I am looking for a new place. I am in the middle of adopting three children. Uh, if you could call me back, area code 575. All right. I think three children would love to live in a ball pit house. I should tell them sometimes we find needles down there and stuff. You know, like you did back in the old McDonald's days. Playing in the ball pit and you like land on a needle. That was always fun. Broken beer bottles and stuff. You have reached the voicemail box of 57. Most of the people are not answering today, and it's probably because I'm calling too early in the day. Everybody's out working and stuff. Hi, Roy. Uh, my name's Ralph. Uh, interested in the rental you have in New Bedford. Um, wondering if uh, it's possible to schedule a, a time to see it maybe on Tuesday next week. I'm down in the Cape. Um, I'm actually here for uh, the month of June, but looking to move uh, July 1st. But uh, at any rate... Um... Okay. Hello? Hey, Ralph, it's Roy. You called about my apartment rental over in New, New Bedford? Oh. Yes, yes. Hi, Roy. How are you? Hey, pretty good. Were you still interested in that? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Um, what, do you know what your availability might be this week? To... Uh, pretty much any day. My wife and I live uh, just a few houses down, so we can come over anytime and take, you know, show, okay. show you around. Okay. Uh, well, would... Um trying to think would would tomorrow can be convenient sure that'd be fine uh would it just be you there or are you just, somebody just so, okay well it's just just me i've got um my two kids are 12 and 14 they'd be with me every other weekend so okay i see um, um would they have a problem um we have kind of a thing with ghosts there ghosts yes oh they'd love that like, like yeah. no I'm, i mean a serious problem with ghosts like you'll see them constantly while you're in there oh uh well i don't know i'll have to i'll have to broach that to them yeah like you, you you'll go in there and you'll like you'll immediately see them as soon as i show you the house tomorrow you know you'll maybe you can okay. you know just make your decision tomorrow but there's a lot of them okay. in there it's it's like it's it's like grand central station or something you know it's just completely really? filled with ghosts and they can't hurt you or anything well, or talk to you but you always feel like you're gonna bump into someone okay all right well i'll uh when was the house built uh, it, 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 it's not that old. It, it's just, uh, it was built in the 1950s, but yeah. the, the thing is, uh, the person that owned it before, he was a scientist, I guess, and he installed okay. all these antennas in the walls and, um, they're still active. They, they pretty much, they just make ghosts visible like at, oh. at all times. It's, it's like, uh, beaming these radio waves all through the house. Okay. Well, and I don't know it, if it's, it sounds interesting. Yeah, we're we're not sure if they're ghosts or if they're it's, it's just uh, you know showing us people that have been there in the past. Because I swear right. I was in there and I, I walked right by myself. I think I was okay. showing the house to someone from like eight years prior. Wow. Huh. So okay. maybe it's not ghosts. Maybe it's just you know a bunch of just just re recordings basically. Sure. But we can't okay. turn them off. We don't know how to turn them off. They're embedded in the walls. All right. We, well, that, that that's fine. I can I can still uh, I I'd still like to see it uh, if possible. Okay. Yeah. We, um, we we tried ripping them out. Like we took the drywall out and tried to take the antennas out, and they just kept giving us electrical shocks even when we had the power off. So we don't know how they work. Okay. And the scientist that okay. lived here, he died. Okay. All right. Uh, well, it, <laughs> I'll t I can take my chances. Okay. <laughs> so the house it looks smaller than it is, but that's just because it's filled with people. But it's not, they're not right. really there, you know? Yeah. It's like, like holograms or something. Okay. Well, be interesting to see it then. 
Okay. Um, uh, is, uh, uh, my goodness, around 11 o'clock? Uh, awesome. Sure. Yeah, that'd be fine. We're at a 225 am- Baxter. 225 Baxter. Okay. Yep. All the way in New Bedford. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. I will, uh, then I, I will, I will see you at 11 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Okay, great. We'll see you then. That'd be great. Thank you, Roy. Uh, goodbye. Right. Bye. He's probably not really interested. He just wants to come and, and see the craziness, you know? Thinks he's going to take some pictures and post them on Instagram. But the joke's on him because pictures never come out in this house. Too much electromagnetic interference, you know? Hi, my name is Tara Korea. My phone number is 508. I'm just calling on behalf of me and my husband are interested in your house that you have for rent. Uh, please give us a call back. Hello? Hi, Tara? Yep. It's uh, Roy. I'm returning your call. You called on Friday about that house in New Bedford. Oh, yes. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Good. Sorry. I thought you were just like a spam. I've been getting those all day. Oh, yeah. I get those all the time on my phone. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, whereabouts is the house located? Uh, it's all the way in New Bedford. It's on Baxter. Baxter. Okay. Yep. I'm from New Bedford. I just I haven't heard of that street. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It's kind of on the north end of town. Okay. And um, it would it, so it just be you and your you and your husband there? It's me, my husband, and our children. Okay. Um, I, there's something I, I need to disclose to you. Um, th- about like it could be scary for the children, but for some reason, um, like there's this sound of drums coming from the basement all the time. I don't know if you can hear them right now. I'm up in the kitchen, but it, it's uh, I don't know, some kind of native drumming type. Th- type thing okay um so I, I don't know if that would be off-putting or scary to the children or anything okay i don't know was it like in the pipes or something uh no it's it's just uh we, we kind of feel like it's it might be like supernatural or something it, it's it's not coming from anywhere it's just it's in the basement like see if, okay. I, if I open up the door here see how loud that is yeah. It's like Indian drum drumming or something. Is this a prank? No, I, I'm not. No, it's not a prank. It, it's just, it's the darndest thing. It's like we don't know how to get rid of it. We've tried to bring in experts and everything, and we just don't know what to do about it. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Over the drumming? No, you just, you you sounded like you were far away. Oh, okay. But yeah, we, we don't know what to do about the drumming. It's just, it's on, it's down there constantly. You can hear it throughout the night and throughout the day. It never ends. Okay. But other than that, it's a really neat place. It's, uh, that's why it's so cheap. It's, uh, because of the drumming. It's hard to keep it rented in here. Um, so when can I take a look at it? Uh, anytime you want. Uh, my, my wife and I, I live just a few houses down. We're, we're home a lot. Okay. So, uh, yeah, pretty much any time you'd like to come by. Okay, uh, what's the address? Uh, it's uh, 225 Baxter. Okay. Do you know what time you'd like to stop by? Um, well, it wouldn't be today. I just got out of work, so um, I'll just talk to my husband about it. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Sorry, sorry about the drumming. I, I'm like down here looking at the fuse box. Okay. So it's it's kind of hard to hear you. Did you say tomorrow? Um, nope. I said I'm going to talk to my husband about it. Okay. Just like find out about the drums and everything? Oh, no. That's no problem. Okay. Okay. Thank we'll, you. We'll see. Okay. Bye. There she goes. So, yeah, I was looking at the comments on the video that I posted this weekend, the last show, and High School Graduate posted a link to a YouTube video, which is two minutes of the Jumanji drums. He's like, just imagine the Jumanji drums playing nonstop. So I was playing that video. Oh, look at this, a 15-minute video of the Jumanji drums. Oh, and it doesn't have all the jungle sounds. Awesome. That's much better. High school graduates, dumb version. Hi, Ryan. My name is Kelly. Uh, you're listening, and I was wondering if you could tell me that 
to schedule a walk through my phone number. Hello. Hey there, it's Roy. I'm returning your call. You called about that um, apartment in New Bedford, the house. Oh, hi. How are you? Hi, pretty good. <laughs> how are you doing? I I'm good. I didn't know if you had any like open houses or how you were doing. It, if you had like a um, appointment schedules that you were doing. Oh yeah. Anytime you want to come by, you can just uh, stop by. We'll we'll show it to you. We live just a couple houses down. Oh nice. Okay. And uh, we're yeah. Basically, I'm a home health aide, and I have clients up in that area. We're currently living in Carver, and mm-hmm. I've been renting a trailer off my grandmother for some time, and she's sold it. So I see. Um, I figure in terms of looking for a place, I'm probably looking to go back up that area. Um, where I have more like people that I work with over there. So okay, just just you or you, your husband living there too, or uh, it's just me and my kids, and that's it. Okay, um, so about the kids, like there's a small issue with the house. Um, okay. I, I don't know. Like I'm at the house right now. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but there's um, the sound of like an Indian tribal drumming drums or whatever coming from the basement oh. constantly. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, and it just never ends, and we don't know why it's That's there. That's so interesting. Yeah, well, it's uh, it, 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 it may sound interesting, but it's 24 hours a day. It just never ends. Like, you, you, wow. you're trying to sleep, and sometimes they get really loud. That's a new one. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I do hear it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, you may think it's interesting now, but, you know, after a, a few weeks of hearing that constantly, it, it really kind of, you know, gets gets on your nerves yeah and i don't know if your kids might find that scary or <laughs> i don't know i mean i, I, I don't it's just, it, it's interesting i don't know yeah um we, we don't know what what it is we've, like, we've so... <laughs> brought in priests we've we've you know those ghost people off of tv they've come in our house That's has actually so been on that fascinating yeah our house has been on that ghost show before but they couldn't find any ghosts That's and they so couldn't cool. yeah they couldn't figure out what the drums were about Wow. I've never heard of anything like that. Yeah, it's the darndest thing. All right. Well, I mean, I'll, I'm going to be in the air tomorrow, so, I mean, I, I, I could just swing by either way. I mean, okay. it can't hurt, I guess. Yeah, yeah um, that'd be fine with me. Uh, so do you want me to give you a call, or is there, do you want me to schedule a time with you? Oh, uh, um, any, thinking... anytime you want to come by. We're, we're uh, you know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time at the house. Um, this week, I'm, I'm, you know, painting the walls okay. and everything, just getting everything ready for the new tenants. All right. So I was thinking maybe around four, if that's okay. A- around what? Around four. Did you say eight? Uh, four. I'm, I'm sorry, the drumming is getting really loud. I was going to say around four. Three? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, just give me a call. It's on Baxter Street. Okay, I'll give you a call around then. All right, bye. Thanks. All right, she's fine with constant drumming coming from the basement, I guess. I don't think I would be. Hi, Roy. My name is Caitlin. In regards to the house for rent, if you could please give me a call, 774. Hello. Hi, Caitlin. It's Roy. I'm returning your your call about the apartment. Hi. Hi. Are, are you still interested? In I a... don't know exactly. I don't know exactly which one that you're talking about, but I did leave a bunch of messages for apartments. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the one in New Bedford. It's a okay. Um, which one? Is um, it on Whitman? Uh, it's on Baxter. Baxter Street. Yeah, um, I didn't have that in the ad or anything, so you wouldn't... Okay, re- give me one second. I'm almost... I'm driving, but I'm almost home, so just oh, okay. give me one second sure, so no I can problem. write a couple things down. Are you writing while you're driving? No, no, no. I'm going to be stopping soon. I'm oh, I see. Just give me one second. Okay. But how many bedrooms is it? It's three bedrooms for 950 Okay. And um, it's uh, seven levels underneath the ground... Seven levels under the ground? Yeah, seven stories down. Like, we've been digging under the house just uh, to have, you know, more square footage on our property. And we've, oh. we've, we're, we've dug down about nine levels so far. We're, we're trying to do ten. So there's a lot of construction going on currently, but 
Um, it should be done within, you know, by the end of this year. But uh, level okay, seven is completely finished. It looks just like the rest of the house upstairs. It's all furnished and everything. It's just seven levels below the ground. Mm, that sounds a little interesting. Um, yeah. Is there any way, is there any that are finished that there can be looked at? Oh, or? yeah. Yeah, level seven is completely finished. It's ready to, to be moved into. There's uh, There's five other families living down there right now. Okay, and, and you said the name of the street was Baxter? Yeah, 225 Baxter. 225 Back. Yep. Baxter. But you're okay with living seven levels underground? You have to walk down all those stairs every time you, you come home? Um, that is interesting. Um, it's all stairs. There's no elevators or anything. Uh, no, not yet. Right now, we're using the elevators to haul up all the dirt because we're uh, we're digging out, you know, a couple more levels underneath you. Okay. So you know, it, there's going to be more families moving in down there. And you said this is New Bedford, correct? Yeah, New Bedford. It okay. looks like a normal. It looks like a normal. Baxter Street. Oh really? I think it used to be called Holy. Bates Street. I think it's the same as Bates Street, if you see that in there. They renamed it recently. Bates Street? Yeah, B-A-T-E-S. I think Baxter and Bates is the same thing. Bates Street? Okay, 225. Bates Street. Yeah. It's Bates and Ashley. Bates and Ashley. Okay. Um... Yeah. Okay, and you said it, what is available where it can be ta taken a look at? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's available. Seven stories under the ground. So far, we've only had one cave in. We had like five families trapped down there for, I don't know, it was less than a week. You know, we're still learning as we go along how to manage underground properties. Oh, okay. Um, it might not be some, I know, um, I have two boys um but to be underground and to ever be trapped for a week i think i'd go crazy oh we, we think we're uh we're you know they, the families all pulled together and shared their food and resources and stuff and uh there was enough oxygen down there They're like just enough they barely made it but uh you know there's no windows or anything oh so no 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 yeah i couldn't do that. What, do you think no there's window. windows? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, there's windows. They, they, they're fake windows, though. They've got lighting behind them, yeah. and it makes it look like... They, they're, they're TV screens. So you, like, open up the curtains, and, and it looks like there's a bunch of land out there. That's what, oh, that's no, what it no, is. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't do that. The thing is, it, it's going to be like a vault. So once we get all the levels built and all the families moved in, we're going to be locking this thing permanently for 30 years. Okay. Um, but it's going to be nice. It's going to be like a community, you know? We've got everything Thank you we anyway for the offer. I appreciate it. <sighs> okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. I guess. Whatever. And I think that was the last one. I've got some other messages in here. Oh, yeah. I've got these carding notes. Somebody left some notes on cars, and I tried to call these on a hobo soda. I got through to one of them, but then the others didn't answer. But anyway, yeah, I guess that's the end of the apartment rental stuff. We're done with that, unless some people call back. Here, let's see if these carding people will pick yeah, up. Yeah, Brian, how you doing? Uh, you left a note on a uh, black Ford F-150 that's parked in the handicap zone. I remember this. Uh, the man is handicapped, and he does have a handicap sticker on there. So your note wasn't appreciated. So anyway, thank you, and have a nice day. <laughs> So I don't know what that's about. He called me Brian, and he's upset because the man is handicapped. So I don't know if it was a carding note or just somebody saying, hey, you shouldn't be parking there. You're not handicapped. Let's call him up and find out. This is from May 19th, by the way. It's been a while. They probably don't even remember. I've tried to call back a few times now, but nope. Your call has been... Yeah, he's just not picking up. I think I'm going to give up on this one, throw it away. Thanks, whoever you are in Minnesota, leaving notes on Ford 150s about people being handicapped, I guess. That was nice of you. Hi, I'm calling for Roy. Um, my name is Andrea. 
and I found a note from you on my car um, yesterday. Uh, I was parked in Green Lake, um, and I just first want to say thank you so much for leaving your name and your number. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope I'm such a nice person for having the integrity and leaving a note. I think um, King Richard told me that him and Olga left a note somewhere, and this one is in their area, kind of. So this one might be from them. But I haven't been able to get her to pick up either. Hi, you've reached Andrea. I'm calling from her local area, and she just won't pick up. Hi, you've reached Andrea. So I guess we are also done with that one. That one was from three weeks ago, and I've tried to call it several times, so I have to give up. Sorry, King Richard and Olga, if that was you that left that one. If any of you would like to send weird stuff to my prank line, like carding notes or people wanting to rent apartments or whatever, the prank line number is 508 784 6969. Oh, yeah. Bruh. Uh, what's up? Hey. Uh, so, I'm sorry if you can't hear me. I'm at the beach right now. It's kind of windy and loud. I can hear you. But, I want to just say hey. Um, Even over these Jumanji drums, I can hear you. Also, feel free to keep Carol on more often. She's a pretty good host. Sometimes even better than you. Uh, wow. Stacy was okay, I guess, but Carol's pretty cool. Thanks, so big if you, noise. Uh, ever feel like having her take over sometimes, or you don't feel like doing the show, uh, definitely don't mind that. But uh, yeah, okay. oh, I got my coin by the way. It's really cool. Thanks for that. It's awesome. You're okay, welcome. Bye. Speaking of the coins, everyone, I've mailed out all of the coins except for those three Kickstarter people who still have not sent their addresses to me. What the hell, you three? I would say the names right now, but I don't know them, and the envelopes are in the other room, and I don't feel like going to get them. And if you didn't get a coin, you better hurry, because they're just about sold out. I've got the remaining few. There, there's like five left or something, and I've got them up over at uh, phonelosers.bandcamp.com. There's a merchandise section over there. And that's where you can get the last couple of coins. And I'm done with this coin nonsense forever. I've also still got a ton of those lapel pins left. And if you buy lapel pins, that helps me be less in the hole on this whole Kickstarter thing. I really mismanaged that Kickstarter, you guys. I'm bad at math. So help dig me out of this hole by buying some PLA lapel pins. They're pretty cool looking. I'm impressed with how nice the lapel pins look. You can get those at phonelosers.bandcamp.com. But I saw Brad Carter, man. Nah, for the end of the life. about the little prank call to the end. What? I'm like, hey, nah, nah. Hvad hedder det? Jeg vil bare sige, hvad så? <laughs> hvad, for noget, hvad for noget tøj har du på? Du forstår ikke, hvad jeg siger lige, men det er jo Brad Carter, du gamle jæs, du. Okay, thanks for that voicemail. Få dig et rigtigt arbejde. Det er hvert mand. It was a good one. Ej, du er ikke en rigtig mand. Have a good Brad Carter, du. Okay, bye. That was from Country Code 45, whichever one that is. I sure don't know. Okay, I'm listening to your new show here about dog fighting and how much you love it. Uh-oh. Well, are you pissed? I don't know if you've ever called, uh, you call Petco and all that jazz, but why not call fucking, uh, um, animal shelters, non-profit animal shelters, because those people are, take themselves really seriously. Oh, ask them if I can have some dogs for dog fighting. Times. Okay. Really dumb. So, maybe give a call to some of those shelters and have some fun. Okay. Bye. Good idea. Hey, Brad, it's Cisco Kid. Hey. Just calling in to ask you if you've watched Mr. Robot at all. Uh, it's available on Amazon Prime, so... Oh, is it? Or at least it is for the meantime. I, I need to catch up. So when Mr. Robot came out, I started watching as soon as somebody showed that screenshot with my name on it. I'm like, yeah, this must be a great show. If they're putting RBCP in their show, why wouldn't I watch this? And I watched most of the first season, but I just kind of lost track of it. I forget why I stopped watching. I've been meaning to get back into that. In the meantime, it was a I don't good know show. Go Check it out when you get the chance. Okay. You're not being a hobo. Yeah. I'll try. <sighs> season one and two are available. Season three is still on TV, or it's not quite. There, I'll find it somewhere. Cool. Anyway, I'm that's sure. all for now. All right, listeners, uh, keep on leaving voicemails and follow the rules. That's right. Thanks, Cisco Kid. Brad, uh, we all love Mr. Biggs, but did you have any clue that he and Roger were so good live and off the cuff? I, I, I was blown away. Oh, uh, yeah. Just yeah. world class. 
I thought you were getting ready to insult Mr. Biggs. Yeah, I was seriously surprised how good their live show was. Because, you know, their podcast is obviously kind of scripted, and I didn't know if that would translate well to a live show. I had no idea he could be that quick with the whole Mr. Biggs thing, and Roger was awesome, too. They were both just perfect. They were just like on their show. I guess they're just being themselves. Two painters and partners to each other. I, 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 was, I was, so, was so impressed. I, yeah. I hope they do those live broadcasts more often. Yeah, me And you too. were great calling in as, uh, as Carol and Steve Biggs. Also, I wanted oh, yeah, to mention Steve how Dave. delightful you and Stacy sounded together on a recent Snowplow show. Oh, um, thank I don't you. think she's lost her touch at all, and she sounded great. Maybe a little. Thanks as usual, Brad. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, I cannot recommend Mr. Biggs to you guys enough. Please go over to AskMrBiggs.com. That's Biggs with two Gs. AskMrBiggs.com. They do a podcast I've been listening for years. I'm a Patreon supporter of theirs. And Mr. Biggs listens to the Snowplow Show now. So you know he's got to be a cool person if he listens to the Snowplow Show. So give that show a try. It's a lot of fun. I'll put a link to AskMrBiggs.com in the show notes. Hey, Brad. It's my first voicemail ever, and I've been listening oh my for gosh. about a year and a half now. Um, get applause. Shout out to Evan, who showed me to the Snowplow Show. I've Thanks. Been Thanks, Evan. And I love it. And, and that's all. He loves it. Thanks, Evan's friend, for calling in. Hey, Roy. It's Loving Guy. The show. And I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed your last show. And, um, Thank you. The one with the New Bedford uh, apartment calls. And that's because I live not too far from New Bedford. Oh, wow. And so when I hear some of those voices and I uh, hear some of those calls, I can, pers- uh, I can perfectly envision the type of person on the other side of the line, you know? As soon as as yeah. soon as that lady called you a, a piece of shit, uh, when you mentioned the dog fighting, you know, like, ah, oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. I should have put her number into Facebook to see what she looks like for real. I, I knew it was New Bedford. I knew that it was the real yeah, deal. Fucking New Bedford. So, uh, I mean, keep it up, because I love that shit. I was cra- laughing my ass off, really cracking up. Thanks. All right, bye. I hope you didn't hate today's show. Hey, Brad, what's up? It's Riley from ASC. Hey. So I'm doing a campaign to get the famous comedian Asterios Kokonos to my apartment. I'm going to lure him in wow. with goodies. And then we're going to spend time together up sketchy. close and personal. Uh, but it's going to make for a lot of great YouTube content, hopefully. And it's going to make for an Asterios Kokonos live Stand up at my house. He's not going to come to so, your apartment. You live in Nevada, don't if, you? I, I know you retweeted already, but if any of your followers would like to go follow me on tweet, Twitter, Twitter. So, Asterios, you guys, he's one of the guys from The Dick Show. I'm a big fan of Asterios. He's much better than Dick from The Dick Show. Much, much better. And he did this thing where he said he would come to some guy's house in Georgia if the guy were to get 100 tweets. And the guy got 100 tweets, so now Asterios is going to do a stand up comedy show in the guy's garage and i guess riley's doing sort of the same thing trying to get him to come out to nevada at ac riley i'm the podcast ranger currently and yeah if i get 400 of these tweets out only 400 tweets we're gonna have a party of it i don't know why asterios doesn't set his sights a little bit higher as far as the number of tweets i would be asking for at least a thousand to come out to someone's house and we're gonna plug some pla stuff yeah anyway see you brad bye so if you guys would like to see Asterios, some guy you've probably never heard of, go from New York all the way out to Nevada to hang out with Riley, another guy that you probably have never heard of. Well, I guess more of you have probably heard of Riley than Asterios in this community anyway. But anyway, if you want to see that happen, there's a retweet thing. I'll put a link in the show notes. It looks like he has 32 retweets so far of the required 400. And in the comments of that tweet, I claim that I will come down from Oregon if the feds will let me leave the state, but I'm full of shit. I'm not going to go down there. Probably not, anyway. Riley's the guy from the Anti-Social Engineering Podcast, by the way. If you don't remember him, that's the podcast that I was on a couple months ago. And Asterios, he had me do a show with him a couple weeks ago. I don't know when that's going to be posted, but it should be up one of these days. Asterios is one of the guys that got sued by Maddox. Maddox sued Asterios and Asterios' work and, of course, lost the lawsuit because the lawsuit was stupid. Hey, Brad. Hey. So, my mother works at a nursing home, and I've been going what? in volunteering. And in her office, there's a reference sheet of other nursing homes 
it, like in the branch. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering if I was running to any trouble taking a picture of that and saying it to you, or if that's even something. Like, I think you should ask your mom if you can do that. It's just like a print off sheet, and I don't know. I just need a second opinion on this. I don't know. I thought mm. it'd be funny to I don't know. call up some nursing homes. And I mean, it's just a list of nursing homes, right? I could just get those from the yellow pages. Say silly things. All right. Keep up the good work, Brad. Okay. Yeah. I'll try. Yeah, I don't know. Like you, you should know better than me if you'd get in trouble for doing that. I'm sure your mom will bail you out if you get in a lot of Hi, trouble. Hi, Brad. It's Dow. Hey. It's spelled D O W W W. Oh shit. Yeah, like I was supposed to know that. You just say your name is Dow and I'm supposed to know that? I don't even know how to change your name at this point. I think you're just stuck as Dal. D A L. That's your new name. D A L. I'd have to go to my address book and stuff to change it. That's too much effort. Yes, that, that's how my that's how my that's how my name is spelled. Okay. I just wanted to say Not anymore. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for adding me to your address book. I'm so happy about that. You're welcome, Dal. Thanks. Anytime, Dow. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I think this is, yeah, I'm really tired, but. Wow, I don't you. care. Yeah, what I, the I, fuck I, is I this? It for you just a minute and a half of this? No, you know that, that's how it's You spelled, telling me you're you know? tired? Now when, when, when you do voicemails, you'd be like, oh, hey, that's Dow, and then everybody who listens to know me, and be like, hey, it's a stupid guy. Yeah. I'm not homosexual. I mean, I, I. I I mean, I, I make an effort to say no homo when, when I do anything that would mm-hmm. be considered homosexual. So it okay, really it's been one minute. Me. Thanks for the call, Dal. And okay, I just went into my address book. I changed it. It's D-O-W-W-W now. It was three W's, right? Hopefully. Looks like that's all the voicemail, so bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the show. Thank you, Dustin W., The Real Crazy Kraz, St. Pepe, JT, and Sim Speak for sponsoring this episode. And thanks all you other people on Patreon supporting the show every single month and getting extra shows every single week. Your help is appreciated. Be sure to support the show if you're not doing that already. Patreon.com slash phone losers. There's probably going to be a new secret show up in the next day or two. If you don't support the show, you're missing out on extra shows. Here's some posititude to end the show with. With so much drama in the galaxy, it's kind of hard for me to be the EMC. This is Mr. Biggs from the Stick It With Mr. Biggs podcast. If you want to learn more about what you heard in today's episode of The Snowplow Show, take a trip to your local library. It's all in books.